The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. to be here with you today as we actually wrap up this summer series where we have been focusing on hmm what was it again do you remember that's right faith and faith as you probably know by heart by now is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see and actually this whole year we have been talking about God's big story from the very beginning to the very end of the Bible, we've talked about countless people who had faith when times were tough, and they put their trust in what they couldn't see because of what they could see. They trusted that God was with them, they saw the things that God had done for them and for others throughout history, and they decided that they could trust God when times were hard, and that helped them through a lot of things. Well guys, it's been a long, amazing journey through the Bible. And today we're going to be putting our final image on the timeline as we look at the very last book of the Bible, Revelation. So if you want to follow along today, you can grab your Bibles, open up to the very last book of the Bible, and we're going to be in Revelation chapter 21. So, the book of Revelation was written by John, who was one of Jesus' disciples. And at this point, John was a pretty old guy. And he had been actually taken prisoner to the island of Patmos, where a lot of the people would work in mines. And the Roman emperor actually sent John to that island because he could not get John to stop talking about Jesus. Well, John lived longer than any of Jesus' other disciples, and he had seen some really amazing things happen. And he had watched the early church grow as the story of Jesus spread. And guys, it must have been so exciting for him to see how many people were now following Jesus. But John had also seen some really difficult things. He had seen people who believed in Jesus beaten up, chased out of towns, thrown in jail. He'd even seen some of them face death for talking about their faith in Jesus. But in John's final days, he knew that more people than ever were following Jesus. And God's story was traveling from one end of the earth all the way to the other, just as Jesus had predicted. And one day, John heard a loud voice like a trumpet. <laughs> And he turned and saw Jesus himself standing there. And Jesus, his eyes were like blazing like they were on fire. And Jesus told John that he was going to show him a vision of the future, things that were going to take place in the future. And he wanted John to write all of it down so that John could share those things with the others so that they too could believe. Well, John watched as God showed him so many things that were going to happen. Some of them were wonderful. Some of them were terrible, and a lot of them were very mysterious. He realized that some of what he saw wasn't going to make sense until it actually happened. And after that vision had ended, John started a letter to several of the new churches, and he explained the strange and amazing things he saw in his vision. Well, in the last part of his vision, God showed John how the story is going to turn out for everyone who believes in Jesus. 
And John did his best to put into words everything that he had seen, even though he didn't fully understand what it all meant. So our thought bubble today is going to be a little picture that we try to create of heaven and what's coming next. And of course, we can't really do justice to a picture of heaven. We don't really know what it's going to be like, but we can think about it a little bit. So, John describes a new heaven and a new earth. So our grass here will be our new earth. And when John saw the new heaven and the new earth in his vision, he remembered what Jesus had said earlier, right before he died and came back to life. And he said this in John chapter 14. Mm, I'm on the wrong page. There we go. He said, there are many rooms in my father's house. If this were not true, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and do that, I will come back and I will take you to be with me. Then you will also be where I am. Wow. So, <clears throat> John realized what Jesus was talking about when he said this. He remembered what Jesus had said and that he was talking about a place where we would never be separated from God. Then, John saw a great white throne. Not great white shark, but great white throne. And he heard a voice from the throne say this, and you're going to find this in Revelation chapter 21. He said, I heard a loud voice from the throne, and it said, Now God makes his home with people. He will live with them, they will be his people, and God himself will be with them and will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or sadness. There will be no more crying or pain. And things are no longer the way they used to be. Wow, so... We're not going to be crying anymore, there won't be any more tears, and there won't be any more boo-boos or pain or death. That's hard to imagine, but pretty amazing. In the future, God's going to make everything new. Everything will finally be the way it should be. And then John noticed that there was light all around, and he said this, The city does not need sun or moon to shine on it. God's glory is its light. And the Lamb, Jesus, is its lamp. Wow. So we have light in the city, but it's not coming from the sun or moon. It's coming from Jesus himself. Isn't that amazing? And that light was beautiful, but it, that wasn't all. The place itself was really beautiful, too. John wrote this. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life. It was as clear as crystal. And it flowed from the throne of God and of the Lamb. It flowed down the middle of the city's main street. And on each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit. Its fruit, fruit was ripe every month. And the leaves of the tree bring healing to the nations. So, in this new earth, we've also got a river of life. And we've got this tree of life as well. Well, John added some more about the people that he saw. He also said, God's servants will serve him, and they will see his face. And we're all going to be so full of joy because finally we can see Jesus' face and be with him. John could see that in heaven, everyone will finally live out what they were created to do with no sin or frustration or exhaustion to get in the way. Imagine, you're never going to be too tired to do what you want to do. Well, John didn't know exactly when the things God showed him were going to take place, and neither do we. But because of what we've seen and what we've heard, we can be certain of this. In the end, God will make all things right for those who put their faith in him. And our memory verse this month reminds us of that. Remember, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Let's just go ahead and practice that together, right? So it goes, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Ephesians 2, verse 8. Great job, guys. When we choose to put our faith in Jesus, here's what we know. We know 
that following Jesus will turn out greater than you can imagine. Can you turn and say that to somebody in your family? Following Jesus will turn out greater than you can imagine. Guys, it can be hard for us to understand everything that happens to us in this life. It can be hard to understand everything in the Bible, just like it's hard to understand everything that happens to you. But we can be sure that God has a plan and his story is good. It's like we've been talking about this whole year with our timeline. Guys, God is in control of eternity from the beginning of his story to the very end. And it's difficult to imagine what our forever home is going to be like exactly, but we know that God is going to be there and that he has a plan and it's good. And for those of us who believe in Jesus, there will be a life that lasts forever. We know that because of what our friend John wrote. A life with no more pain, no more death. A life where we are fully alive and in a way that we can really only imagine. Jesus made it clear that when we put our faith in him, we have a relationship with God that will last forever. We can be part of God's big story forever. Because of that promise, we can live with confidence and joy no matter what happens. We know that God's plan is good and his love with us will last, well, forever. And guys, a hope of a forever home with God, like our life to come, can help us with our life here today. It helps us when we're scared and worried about the future because we know that the ending of our story is going to be amazing and perfect, beyond anything we could ever hope to understand. And it helps us when we realize that things are not yet like the way that they should be, but someday they will be. They'll be made right and perfect. We know that because God promised it to us. And it helps us when we remember that death is not the end of our stories because everyone who knows Jesus will get to spend forever with him. Can we say our bottom line one more time? Following Jesus will turn out greater than you can imagine. And guys, I think that's definitely worth celebrating. Don't you think so, Sarah? Yeah! Oh my goodness. Oh! Okay, I have some other coffee. Oh, you do? Jesus for forever. Can you even believe that? That is so worth celebrating any time. Go ahead and have a little happy dance for yourselves and your family because that's worth celebrating. Well guys, let's go ahead and bow our heads and pray and thank God for all that he's given us and all that he's going to give us in the future. Can we do that? Dear God, you are so amazing for the vision that you gave to John. Even though we don't know when these things are going to happen, or exactly how they're going to take place, we know that because of you, we can trust you no matter what. Please help us to have faith and trust you because we know that following you will turn out even greater than we can even imagine. We love you, Lord, and we ask these things in your name. Amen. Well, guys, it's hard to believe that we are at the end of the big story. <laughs> and I'm going to have my friend Sarah come out and help us. Uh, talk about our connection activity for today. We're not only at the end of a whole big story, we're also just at the end of the month. And it's time to get real good and familiar with our memory verse. So I've got some ideas on how to practice your memory verse, and Sarah is going to help me out with them. The first one, I think, has to do with balloons. Can you, can you explain to us how that works? I have a balloon. You do? What else do you have? Okay, I also have little pieces of paper. Do they like have memory verse words on them? They do have memory verse words on them. Now I made them pretty small. You can yeah. probably make them a little bigger. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but you can write them, um, you can write the whole like one word and put like it in Like one word balloon. per balloon? Oh, yeah, one okay, word per okay. balloon. Or you can do multiple words per balloon. Love it. But you're going to take your words, however many you choose, and you're going to stick them in the balloon. Okay, okay. Okay. It's kind of hard. It can be so kind of hard. So maybe ask your mom or dad to help you. Maybe one word per balloon will work, but you can also put multiple in the balloon, yeah. like Sarah's doing now. Okay, and, and what do you do with the balloon And then you blow that? it up, okay. and then magically, oh, uh, when you, not magically, but you blow it up and it just becomes like that. Oh, wow. So and the words are in there. The words are in there. 
How do I get them out if I want to put the words in order? So, you're going to pop the balloon. We are! It's a little scary. Okay. We're going to pop it, and then once you pop it, you can take the words out and put them in order. Okay. Okay, okay just go ready? for it. You ready? Ah! Woo! Yeah, okay, that that's fun. Now we can put the words in order. Jesus love you. Okay, oh, good, perfect. Good. Okay, well, that's one great idea for practicing the memory verse. You could also put the memory verse on some little slips of paper and put them on some dominoes. Ooh, dominoes. Maybe put them in order, oops, and stand them up. And then, if they want to stay up, you can knock them over once you've got it together. Or you could do the same thing with Legos. Put each word on a slip of paper, put it on a Lego, and then see what you can build out of the words once you put them in order. Mm -hmm. And you can also just put them on some sticky notes. Oh. And maybe, how about if I just put them, put them up here, and then, yeah. uh, let's see, these are in order, right? For, For it, it is, is, let's see, by grace you have been saved. Oh. So you can say it as you put it up, and then as you take it down, you can see how fast you could do it. Oh, so yeah. you can put the whole verse. We just have part of the verse because uh, we're still working on it. Right. But um, you could just go fast. Like, for it is by grace, you have, you have, I need to work on you it. You have been, you have been saved. saved. But do it in order and Through better faith. than us. Okay. But that's just an idea. You could also take these sticky notes and put them on the wall in random order and see how fast you can put them back together. We've got lots of ideas. True. Well, guys. Thank you for spending this whole year with us, traveling through God's big story. It's been so much fun, right, Sarah? So fun. We've had a lot of fun. And from Genesis to Revelation, we see God's big story, and we see how good it is. And I hope that you guys just continue to be excited to learn about the Bible, because we've definitely learned a lot, but I can't wait to see what we're going to be learning in August. Woo! It's so exciting. Well, guys, we'll see you next week and next month. See you in August, friends.